and this dot represents one person who's healthy and decides to go out like usual. They jump on the subway and head into the office where they catch COVID-19. But they don't feel sick right away and might not for several days. So later they go to a basketball game where they unknowingly infect two or three more people. Most of these people will have relatively mild cases, but one might be an elderly person with a severe case who will eventually have to go to the hospital. But these three, who are all infected but don't feel sick, go out again, on the subway, into the office, and then out after work, infecting several more people, 20% of whom will need to go to the hospital. Over a short period of time, this process multiplies the number of people going to the hospital each day. Before long, the hospital is full and a crisis begins. People with severe cases of COVID-19 can't get treatment, and some who could be saved die. Plus, people with other issues can't get treatment either, and some of them die. This surge of severe cases causes avoidable deaths. That's what happened in South Korea, Iran, and Italy, all of which went from 100 to more than 5,000 cases in less than two weeks. A lot of people died because they couldn't get into the hospitals. The surge is made up of only severe cases, but it was generated by people who didn't feel sick, spreading the disease in public. Which means the people who can do the most to avoid these unnecessary deaths are these people. And that means all of us. To slow the virus down, you need to act as if you already have it. By avoiding public transportation, the office, crowded places, and even small social gatherings, you decrease your chances of both getting the disease and spreading it. This is called social distancing. If enough of us do it, the virus still spreads, but much slower. Over time, many people might still get infected, but fewer severe cases show up to the hospital each day, never overwhelming the system. This trend line gets flatter. These people can all get treatment, and fewer people die because of it. These are the two ways the COVID-19 pandemic can play out. But this one only happens if everyone does their part. And it's why experts and officials are urging people to flatten the curve by social distancing and staying home as much as possible. It's also why in the U.S., many companies are helping by requiring employees to work from home. And major sports leagues have canceled their games for the time being. It may seem drastic, but it's worked before. In 1918, the cities of Philadelphia and St. Louis were both hit by a flu pandemic, but they responded in different ways. In Philadelphia, health officials allowed a huge parade to go ahead. While in St. Louis, officials prepared. They closed schools, theaters, and bars. Philadelphia's hospitals were overwhelmed, and many more died as a result. But St. Louis was able to avoid those excessive deaths. A hundred years later, these are the two scenarios we face. A difference not in whether you get the coronavirus, but when you get it. That could mean the difference between life and death, maybe for someone you know. But we have to act now.